Huge and lit with millions and billions of glow worms that sent the ice a glinting and a gleaming and a dazzling as the glows work, glow worms moved. There were vast icicles hanging down from the ceiling, and as if something had exploded from above and frozen into great spikes of turquoise ice. The floor of the cavern was a sea with sea, and above it, as Snotland had said, the witch and elven had built a viking town on stilts. A crazy maze of wooden platforms wound nearly from one side of the cavern to the other, with houses and blacksmith's forges and armories, and even a crooked great hall standing in the centre, made out of what looked like the jumbled remains of ships, with the skull and crossbones treacherous flag flying from the top. At the edges of this town, there were at least a hundred black ships skulking like predatory widow, widow spiders, uh, torches and flares glowing along their sides. And there was a melancholy familiar sight of gigantic dragon cages with that terrible sound of captured terrified dragons and the smell of chains being made out of molten metal. But Alvin and, and the witch were using dragons as slaves again. It was good for kick up to see it this time. See this at this time for the, it was so easy in the chaos and horrors of horror of war to forget what they were fighting for. It reminded Hiccup that though he had made mistakes, he had released the dragon furious, he had lost Kanakazi, he had made those mistakes for a reason. This must not happen. This misery, this must not happen in the future. A new world had to be born. With a sick feeling in his stomach, Hiccup recognised dragon marker helmets on long poles sticking triumphantly above the town. Poor Kamikaze was in there somewhere. Oh, please let her be all right. Ferocious looking Alvin, as many warriors hurried along the wooden warway, walkways, shouting at each other with light, and lighting flares and cooking food and making weapons. Circling above were the Alvin, Alvin's men sentry, riding bullguard slave dragons whose goggling eyes sent out such leg beams as they patrolled the camp guarding against intruders. It's extraordinary to think that such a huge gathering of houses and ships could have been hidden from the dragon markers and the dragon furious for so long but the roar of the waterfall had entirely muffled the noises and the smells and the lights of this busy underground town from outside. Hiccup adjusted his sword. Let's go, he whispered. The three-headed dragon swooped down towards the wooden platforms of the bustling village, Windwalker and the Hurricane flying low under the deadly shadow's wings, so that they could be camouflaged as they passed through the circling four guard sentries. It's not that eyes gleamed admiringly at the beautiful, deadly shadow dragon plunged into a dive. I have to admit, reluctantly useless, he whispered, that for a lot of runty little reeds, you really do, your team do, travel in trust aisle. Hiccup's heart was beating so hard that like it might leap out of his chest any moment as they as they saw near the bull the, the bull guards. One of the bull guards whipped its head round, perhaps feeling the passing wind from the deadly shadow's wings, or hearing the little muffled whispers of the hunting dragons. Surely they might see it, thought Hiccup, petrified. They swooped downwards, and Hiccup tipped his face upwards expecting at any moment a roar of discovery and then the whine of a full aerial pursuit. But there was nothing, no suspicion in the faces of the Arbor's men sentries or the dragons they were riding. The bull guards continued their patrol, their eye beams flashing around the bay in steady circles. Down the red deadly shadow swooped and shot underneath the wearer's wooden platform, followed by the hurricane and windwalker and the hog fly, storm fly, rose fang and toothless. Hiccup there was barely room for the deadly shadow underneath the maze of wooden platforms. Its wings dipped into the sea as it flew, swerving through the stilts that stood in the water like legs. It was bizarre to be flying underneath the streets of the city. Yeah, wow, yes, because they're flying underneath and in a sort of stuff. Yeah. Streets of the city. Looking up in between the wooden boards, Hiccup could see the shoes of people walking up and down the walkways above. A hatch opened ahead of them. The wooden walkers were just in time for someone chucked a bucket of fish guts through the hatch before slamming it shut again. The loathing in the water were the rotting carcasses of sunken ships. It's not that landed a hundred hurricane on the upturn hull of one of these 
submerged Rex and gestured upwards with his thumb. This is that, she whispered. Before um, the witch caught us, the hurricane and I went on loads of spying operations searching for the things. Look, I've marked the hatch with an X to be sure I'd get the right one when I got the cane back. Uh, Hiccup and Fishlegs landed their dragons beside him and the three dragons sat in a row in the hull of the sunken ship, like three great cormorants roosting on a rock. Who is in there guarding them? Stop Rex Hyde screamed. Oh, a couple of dozy owls with them and guards. But we can deal with them, can't we? He lies, whispered Stormfly and Dragon Teeth. Trust a liar to know a liar. If all three of us climb up, said so Snotlad, we can carry the throne through the hatch and balance it on the back of the bad deadly shadow. Then we'll go on to the prison and rescue Kamikaze. Hiccup drew his sword and swallowed hard. Okay, said Hiccup. Wodens hang Hogfly and Stormfly. You stay here with the Windwalker and the Deadly Shadow. Woof woof, <laughs> said Hogfly obediently. Keep to the left, marry me, sunshine. Where's the exit? <laughs> oh, Hogfly. Toothless, said Hiccup, you can come with me. I don't want to let you out of my sight. Because Toothless is the best lost thing. Toothless smiled radiantly. See, Stormfly, see, Warden's friend. Toothless, so important. Hiccup can't let him out of his sight. Toothless, very, very important. The deadly shadow can give all three of us a lift up to the hatch. Windwalker, could you open it up for us, please? A single breath from Windwalker incinerated the bolts around the hatch and it fell open. Hiccup, sitting on the back of the deadly shadow, who was hovering just underneath the hatch, peered up inside. It was completely dark and completely quiet. I'll go in first, whispered Snotlab, because I know my way around. Snotlab's eyes were curiously bright. We don't trust that Snotlab, do you? Was it excitement or was it something more than that? It's not like laughed at Hiccup's expression, which was a little dubious. You do trust me, don't you, Hiccup? T -t Toothless doesn't trust him, said Toothless, a deep, deep little voice from, from, down, from down in Hiccup's waistcoat. It's like Treshk is trusting a snake not to bite you. I want to trust you, said Hiccup steadily. I really, really want to trust you, Snot Lad. Snot Lad dropped his own gaze. Did he look guilty just for a fraction of a second? He drew his dagger and put it between his teeth. Snotlight stood up onto the deadly shadow's back and hauled himself up onto the edge of the edge of the hatch where he swung for a moment before climbing into the darkness above and disappearing. It's my madness, said the muffled voice of Toothless. It was madness. But Snotlight hadn't really given Hiccup cause to try, um, tr trust him in the past, but barely had his Snotlight's feet disappeared through the hatch and into the room than Hiccup scrambled up after him. He got swallowed hard and got to his feet and tried to make up out where Snotlout was. Snotlout, he whispered nervously. There was no answer. The darkness was so absolute it muffled the senses. Hiccup's eyes peered desperately into the blackness, but he could see nothing. Snotlout, he whispered again, a little louder, but again there was no reply, just a faint rustling. Why is Snotlout being so silent? He must be in the room somewhere. He'd only climbed through the hatch two seconds before Hiccup. Hiccup automatically edged softly, softly backwards as he began to suspect what this silence might mean. <gasps> and then a familiar smell reached his nostrils, a faint stink of rotting eggs. Hiccup would have recognised that stench anywhere, that delicate little aroma was the foul skunk smell of the murderous tribe and every single member of the murderous tribe was a loyal Albinan and servant of Alvin and the Witch. He could hear a shuffling of immense feet and a hoarse breathing of not just one great warrior, but many, it only went one thing, betrayals, treachery and betrayals, not that I betrayed him. Down in the depths of Hiccup's waistcoat, Toothless was giving Hiccup gentle, desperate nips on the tummy. I should run, thought Hiccup, drop back through that hatch and fly away on the back of the wound windwalker. But if not like had betrayed him, it meant that Snotlight like did not really know where the lost things were hidden. So there was only one thing left to do. It's time to put plan B. Oh, I'm glad there's a plan B into action. Hiccup thrust his head down through the hatch. Fishlegs was already standing on the deadly shadow's back, growing up his courage to squirm up behind Hiccup. Plan B, whispered Hiccup. Fishlegs looked back at him with shocked eyes. No, not Plan B, it's not that like betrayed us already. Plan B, if it repeated. And then Hiccup ignored all of those instincts, screaming at him to run away. He moved away from the hatch, from escape and freedom, back into the unknown of the darkened room. Oh God, Hiccup. Two more steps and Hiccup was grabbed by rough hands. Got him, yelled the other man. And three more warriors seized Hiccup as well, punching him, hitting him, even though Hiccup put up no resistance. From darkness, he was hauled into dazzling light into a room full of chattering people. The noise died down. 
Winded by the light, he can't recognise the person who spoke next from the sound of their voices. It was strangely changed, that voice, muffled and disfigured into a ghastly shrieking rasp, but nonetheless, it was definitely the voice of Hickok's greatest enemy, Alvin the Treacherous. Why, Hickok the Rentus Helen the Third, as I live and breathe, thank you so much for joining us. Uh oh. It's not loud. I really hoped he wasn't going to betray him, but. He did. I'll have to have the next chapter, which is called Chapter 10, Treacherous Betrayal, tomorrow.